Hey guys, welcome to freesaloneducation.com. I'm here with American Salon Magazine at Premier Beauty Show in Orlando, Florida. I got Rafe Hardy from Sexy Hair Concepts. Is Hello. Sexy Hair Concepts? Sexy is, Hair. Sexy Hair. And uh, you're the artistic director, correct? I am. So I'm pumped to talk to you because, so there's a couple things. When I, the very first hair show I went to 12 years ago, mm -hmm. there were two booths. I'm not going to name the other one, but sexy hair was the most exciting. It was you had the inflatable tent kind of booth, and you had oh, a yeah. DJ in there, and the bleachers. Re yes, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Setup. So you had break dancers inside. So yeah. I uh, that was the first time I saw somebody spinning their scissors. I don't know if it was you, uh. <laughs> but. I was only two months into beauty school, and I went back to beauty school, and I started spinning my scissors. And still to this day, You're the way that I cut hair is because of sexy hair. So whoever that was, I don't know. But oh, that's fantastic. Could have been you. I think we all spun our shears, <laughs> but we had one guy in particular that worked with us. That, that did was, it a lot? He'd do a large cut, and he'd flip those shears yeah. around. Yeah. yeah, that was Mr. Wayne Tuggle. Okay, all yeah. right. Still friends to this day. That's very cool. Very cool. So, um, so let's talk about your career. You've been oh, yeah. in the industry for over thirty years, right? Thirty-five. So, tell me, like, what is so interesting to me is when I would like right now. I've been in the business for twelve years, mm -hmm. right? So, and I always thought when I first started, thinking of people that were in the business for twelve years seemed like a long time, right? <laughs> twelve. So years, now yeah. I know that thirty years is creeping up on me. It's going to happen quickly. Uh, what have you seen? What is the big transition? in hair, you've been in the show circuit and all that. So what's like the big change that you've seen? Well, you know, I, I, I think that the most major change that we've seen is we've come a long way from those visual show days. You know, I think that uh, today's hairdresser really comes to hair shows um, for the education, okay, you yeah. know, because the industry is changing so much, so quickly, so fast technology techniques everything is changing that you really have to stay on top of things to, to understand the latest and greatest uh, whether it's color or whether it's you know uh, lifting or whether it's even different cutting techniques like we provide um, I think that the industry has gotten a little bit more serious about their time when they come to shows right you know I still think that there's a place for edutainment right you know <laughs> yeah. because I mean uh, watching someone blow dry hair is kind of <clears throat> Right. You know, kind of. So I, I think that to uh, uh, people are looking to be inspired. Yeah. They're looking to leave with something of value, more bang for their buck, you know. So uh, a lot more private classes and companies are setting classrooms for that individual attention type of education. And that's come a long way. It's always been there. But I think these days it's really relevant in our industry where people will come to the hair show. They'll walk the show floor. They'll see the latest and greatest as far as products and things. But when it comes to real value for their money, I think education is yeah. the foremost. Awesome. Yeah. And so you, so how long have you been with Sexy Hair? 15 years. 15 years. And you, uh, how did you start in the company? Well, um, I was working for another company, and I, uh, I happened to see Michael O'Rourke, who is the original yeah. founder of Sexy Hair. I saw him at a, a booth, and he was doing hair, and visually, it was, it was very different. It was the way he moved uh, for a hairdresser. You know, as we're all very visual, and that's what attracted me at first, and then the results that I saw, and then... Uh, throughout the years, uh, for about two or three years, we would see each other at hair shows, and I'd look up and see him out there looking at me at my stage, and I would go, and I'd watch him on his stage, and then we started taking from each other, you know, and one day we had an opportunity to sit down for lunch, and he was uh, starting Sexy Hair at that time, okay. and he had asked me to come on board, and I was with this company, and I had worked for uh, almost nine years with this company. And um, we're, we were doing well, and I, it was still exciting for me. This, uh, and then the other company changed, and I finally went on board with Michael in, in 2000. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I remember uh, in school, I had the Michael O'Rourke VHS tape. I think it was Structure in Motion, yes. is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I watched that thing over and over. That was a good one. So, um, all right, so how do you become art director? How do you make that, how do you work your way to that point? In a company? Well, uh, I always say keep your wits about you, and wits is short for whatever it takes, you know, and as a rambunctious and, and driven hairdresser who was 
interested in becoming a teacher right out of beauty school, but my, my instructor said, no, get out there and, and see the Learn. real yeah. world. Yeah. Right. And then, you know, you can always do that at a later point. So with uh, that teacher bug that bit me, I started looking for a company to work for. And I think that's the start of it to uh, reveal yourself, let yourself be known, your abilities, your stage presence and everything. If it, and if it takes practice and work, and I mean, as far as I'm, uh, my story, um, you know, I, I come from a small town in Louisiana, four years in the military, got out of the military, went to beauty school, and just wasn't sure. My mother was a hairdresser. Um, so, and I've always had uh, a knack for sharing with others, and I, I felt it was my calling to get out there and really just kind of share that information and help others to grow. And that philosophy, of course, when I uh, was introduced to Sexy Hair, that is their philosophy. So right. it fit right in with where I was going. And I think if you're interested in becoming an educator or a platform artist, it's just kind of getting your foot in the door, showing your work, showing that you're capable of representing in whatever way that that certain company, you know, of course, there's right. lots of different flavors of, of edu <laughs> edutainment out there, right. education, how to's and things like that. But I think it's it takes dedication, it takes discipline, it takes sacrifice, a lot of time away from your family. Yeah. You know, we're called weekend warriors. Yeah. So you got to be out there where the action is and... I, I started doing shampoos and blow dries, you know, and yep. I, I, I offered to go international free, um, just give my room and board and I'll go. They'll pay me so I could be there as an assistant, but what I'm getting in return, that experience, that acknowledgement, the ability to learn different things and to share my talent and my art. Right. But it's a it's a constant battle staying up with the latest and greatest, you know? Yeah. And when I say battle, meaning that it takes time out of your life and it takes uh, uh, that willingness to understand that you still have a lot to learn. Right. You know? Yeah. And I, I have a funny saying, all my colleagues always... They, they razz me about it because it's an old saying, but it's so true. And it's when you're green, you're growing. Okay. And when you're ripe, you're rotten. <laughs> so when you think very, you know it all, you're going to fall Louisiana. off the tree. Yeah, you're exactly that. right. It's a southern analogy. Right. but I love it. It still works. <laughs> That's awesome. So, um, so two more questions. As an art director now, what have you seen? How long have you been the art director? Uh, eight years eight now. Eight years. So yeah. what's the difference between an art director eight years ago and an art director today? Well, you know, I, I, it's, it's still, um, it still takes some insight as to the trends and so forth. And what's helped me is I get to travel on a global level and yeah. get influenced by different cultures and different uh, trends from different countries and so forth. Um, I think now because we've grown together, a lot of people on our team have grown together, it's a little bit um, easier to to do what we have to do because everyone plays their part and they're, they understand the, well, the wits, whatever it takes. And we have a team now over the years, we develop a team that makes everyone's job easier because everyone pulls their weight and knows how to do it really well. Right. Um, and that's as far as on the inside. As far as the outside, it's, um, it's always a challenge to go out there and really decipher what we're seeing as far as trends from an artistic uh, director's point of view and to be able to create haircuts and styles and imagery that is, well, relevant, that's trendy, that's going to excite hairdressers. Um, everything's been done in this industry. It's really hard yeah. to come up with something brand new. Um, we're still managing to do it at Sexy Hair with some of the, the looks and the techniques to achieve those looks as well as our products. So I think that um, as an artistic director, how it's changed over the years is the fact that you have to, you have to be even more insightful back than you were back then now. Right. Because, of course, when you look around, the competition is out there. You have to do something that's really going to stand out. And trying to find that point of difference, yeah. I think, is getting a little bit more challenging. Once it's found, it's easy because the team helps you produce it. So Absolutely, yeah. it kind of goes hand in hand. Yeah, definitely. And so uh, when, you're, uh, when you're not doing hair, you talked about family and all of that. Mm -hmm. what, what, are you, what are you doing? Well, my, my pastime, one, I have a 16-year-old daughter. I'm okay. a single father. So, so you're in that, that, that <laughs> yeah. time frame right now, right? <laughs> I am. Um, that, and that's a job in itself right. for all of you who have teenagers. Uh, right. um, 
But uh, to, for me to get away, um, I'm an adventure motorcyclist. Oh, nice. So I have a motorcycle I can take um, on the road or if I can go off-road. And I enjoy the, the release and getting away from the daily, the normal grind. Um, I find that when you're on a motorcycle, everything else goes away because you have to concentrate on what you're doing. Right. You're on a motorcycle. Yeah. And getting to see places and I'm, you know, from Louisiana, so the outdoors has always been a big part of my life. And I'll throw a tent and a sleeping bag on the back of my motorcycle and just take off in a direction and stop when I want to and it's my time, it's my casual time. Yeah. And it just allows me um, that freedom that I don't normally have, you know, my cell phone stays off other than GPS. Right. Uh, to right. know where I'm going. Yeah. And, and just and get away and just enjoy the, the solitude. You know, we love people. You know, I love people. And it's been my life. And, and this industry has been my life for the past 35 years. But you have to have you have to supplement it with some your own time. And I found I used to golf, but that takes like eight hours. Takes forever. I know. Yeah. I love golf, but and if I'm be gone eight hours, I'm gonna go somewhere besides a golf course. <laughs> right. So and I go to the desert. I go to the mountains. I mean, I'm from Louis, uh, from Los Angeles, where I live now, and I have the Sierra Nevada mountains, or two wow. hours drive for me. So I can be at seven thousand feet in a nice, cool campground, enjoying Mother Nature. That's awesome. So that's great. That's my getaway. Very cool. So, um, so one last thing with uh, sexy hair. What's happening? What's next? Um, guys, we just finished our 2018 photo session. Nice. So, and it and happened last week. A lot of timing and preparation. Um, you know, and another part it's of being, being released in 2018. It's being released January 2018, but it's in the can already. That's We've crazy. already got it. We want to stay ahead of time. You know, yeah. in this industry, you have to get out your collateral to all your distributors and everything. Right. The classroom formats, the visuals, and also they can start to print. So. We, we did a little early this year because, well, this is when the schedule allowed. Um, but we've got some, and you'll see kind of a, a change in our imagery, a, a kind of a, a, we're stepping in a little bit more of a, a creative artistic direction with our work. Uh, three years ago, we uh, took on Marilyn Monroe as our yeah. ambassador. Well, we created collection cuts relevant to that era, that time. And then we came up uh, the following year with Modern Hollywood, which is a collection, another collection, and that was for uh, 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 2015. Okay. And then for 2016 this year, we have uh, California Dreamin'. So it was all about the quintessential kind right. of uh, L.A. kind of a girl, West Coast girl kind of thing. We stayed with that theme. And uh, next year, we're going a little bit of direction. I think you'll notice our imagery's changed. Our education is always going to be world class. And we'll be able to share with you some very new techniques. Um, just as a preface, we have one style that uh, one of our artists created, and she created a new braid that hasn't been done before. Okay. So that's exciting when you ever, that's, it's brand new. That's so cool. It's, yeah. yeah. Instead of mixing and matching, and we got to wait totally, till 2018? Uh, January 2018, <laughs> yeah. I said a sneak preview. I'm it's a such sneak, like a sneak. YouTube person. I'm like, I, whatever I think of, I put out tomorrow. So it's like very, I exactly. can't even fathom 2018 Well, right when now. they said we were having a, a photo <laughs> session, in, you know, in uh, May, I'm kind of like, well, that's 2018. I, it's, but you kind of predict and, and yeah. knowing where trends are going. And in this case, we're, uh, we weren't so... I guess caught up in where we think trends are going versus us setting new trends. Right. And which that's is, what being an art director is about. And it, yeah, exactly. And it's, and dictating that far out in advance, what's going to be hot, what's going to be not after 35 years in the business, you know, and working with professionals yeah. that we do as sexy hair, we can kind of determine where the hair is going to be or where it will be going. Right. Because we have to think beyond 2018 because if we're presenting something in 2018 and it's not new and fresh and it's already been done, then it's not a new collection. It's right. kind of a different take on what's happening already. Exactly. I want to share with them what's happening towards the end of 2018 so they can be ahead of the trend curve. Nice. Which is what we shoot for. Cool. Awesome. Well, I'm very excited I got to sit down with you, finally meet you. Same here, Matt. And uh, definitely... Uh, thank you to American Salon Magazine for uh, hooking up this interview. And so check them out, americansalon.com, and also check us out, freesaloneducation.com. And, uh, yeah, thank you so much. Thanks, man. I appreciate right. it. Good we'll luck, you guys out there. We'll see you on the next video. Ciao.